Hello and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. Today we'll be speaking with John Hannes, the Executive Director of PDX Hackerspace. Welcome, John. Thank you, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So John, tell me first a little bit, if you would, about PDX Hackerspace, about when it, was, uh, when it first came to be and why this organization was created. We first came to be in July of 2014. Uh, so we've been around for about six years. And we came to be because um, we all had similar interests in technology, the group of founding members. And we had a building owner who really liked the idea of a community space such as ours. Oh. Um, so makerspace or hackerspace, these terms are interchangeable. So it's a bunch of uh, community-minded makers. Okay, and, well, um, was... go ahead. Yeah, and we've just been growing the uh, community by word of mouth uh, since then. We have over 200 members now. That's pretty good word of mouth, I'd say. Pretty good. <laughs> I was wondering about the hackerspace and makerspace. I didn't, I didn't know if that was the same thing or not, because I'm kind of familiar with the makerspace. But... Yeah, so hackerspaces in the U.S. are generally older um, than when the maker uh, oh. movement happened, which was kind of a, a thing with O'Reilly Media. It's a little complicated, but... Uh, it was a rebranding that uh, we, I guess we missed the memo on, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That way it sounds like it's working for you. So uh, what, what kinds of things have you been working on or have the people there been working on? All sorts of projects. So it encompasses software and hardware. Uh, part of being a member means that you have co-working space that you can use. We have a wood shop, a metal shop, a craft lab, so all sorts of textile arts. Um, we have lasers and 3D printers. Uh, really anything that um, that members have enough interest in, we probably have it here. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a great deal. Because um, not everybody has room in their garage for all that, do they? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, but recently I understand, even though that's been working for you and it sounds like it's a very supportive, um, community-oriented kind of uh, organization, you've kind of pivoted and changed your focus. Can you tell me about why you did that and what you're doing now. Yeah, so we recently, starting in March, we started producing and donating PPE, uh, per personal protective equipment, to first responders and medical professionals in the Portland area and beyond. Um, wow. the, the reason that we did that is because we saw a need. We saw that large manufacturers were struggling to keep up and other large manufacturers were working on ramping up and hadn't been producing before. So we thought if we could try to help fill that gap, that that would be the most efficient use of our time. So that's what we did. That's awesome. Um, and there has been a huge need for that. So are you uh, focusing on getting those out mostly to this area, to the, to the Portland metro area then? That's definitely where we started and where we mm -hmm. saw the biggest need because it's easiest to identify needs where you are locally. Right. right. Um, but as we continued to produce, we um, kept up with our outreach. We have lots of volunteers working on outreach and identified several emergency operations centers around the country uh, that had a, a critical need. And so we started shipping out there. We've shipped to over 20 states. Um, wow. The largest states, uh, Oregon, of course, is the largest because of our ability to identify needs. Uh, Washington, New York, New Jersey. Florida, uh, Illinois, Michigan, uh, the list goes on. But yeah, lots of places. How, how much product, I guess, have you sent out? Do you have any, any idea of uh, like how many masks or how many, you know, whatever you've sent out? Yeah, the face shields, we, as of this morning, have sent out 6,700. <laughs> um, and uh, by the end of today, it'll be 7,000. Yeah, that, that's how math works, wow. 300 today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and the face masks, the fabric face masks, which is another thing that we started producing, um, and that's for not for medical use. So it's not considered PPE, but it is something that's used and needed by the community to reduce spread. And we're um, asked to wear them. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and we're, we're producing those as well. We've done 1,500 of those. Wow. 
Wow. So, um, and, and then there's other accessories. There's something called ear savers, which is 3D printed. And they, well, they do what they say they are. They save they your save ears, your ears. From, from pain. <laughs> so if you want to get a because good seal. Because of the loops. Because of the, yeah, yeah. the loop N95 masks, uh, they're not considered respirators if they don't have a tight enough seal. So you really need to Ooh. tension them up. And if you're tensioning them up tight enough, they hurt your ears. <laughs> yeah. And you're all walking around do. with your ears sticking out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's that too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So how are you um how are you distributing them now like say if there was um a, an an organization that works with um say veterans or they work with you know seniors or they you know work or, or it's a medical um institution and they have a need should they just go to your website and contact you are you still taking uh requests from people for that yeah yeah absolutely okay. so uh, we found that the need for face shields has gone down because you can buy them now uh, okay. But if for some reason you have a critical need and aren't able to afford it and you meet those tier one needs, the first responder, medical professional, people of high risk, a high exposure, then you can go to our website and request a donation there. So when you say donation, are you not charging for any of this? That's correct. We're donating everything that we're uh, producing. That's, that's very impressive. Very generous and very impressive. So are all the people that were um, working there as members are have they just like let go of their other stuff and are working on this or or just working on this in their spare time how's that how's that going I think the um, the phrase is many hands make small work so we have scheduling of two-hour shifts for people to come in and volunteer their time to run the laser or do some processing work uh, cleaning the shield sanitizing bagging uh, any one of 20 different steps that we have to get it from uh, raw material to that finished product that we can donate. Wow, that's impressive. Is there anything that you need from the public? Um, do you want people to spread the word about this to organizations that might need it, or do you need supplies, or is there anything else that, that you need, or you guys have it all handled? Uh, if it was a couple, a few weeks ago, then raw materials was something that we were still sorting out. Uh, but now we have a good lead on raw materials. Of course, uh, we're going to Joann's for most of our orders. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, any lead into getting discounted uh, quilters cotton, specifically a tight woven, oh. no stretch quilters cotton, uh, okay. that would be really useful because we're ramping up the uh, cotton mask, the, the fabric face mask production, as we see the need for face shields uh, being met by large manufacturers. Okay, okay, good. I think it's really amazing that you're doing this and, and really wonderful. Um, I appreciate that you have all those people volunteering their time. And so PDX Hackerspace is a place to go if you are a, an organization that really is in need of PPE, that you might be able to help out with that. And, um, and then if people are, you know, are interested in just finding out more, they can go to the website, right? That's right. And we'll be okay. back as a normal hackerspace someday. But uh, hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later. I think we are we all are hoping that. But in the meantime, um, I'm, you know, I'm I'm proud that it's a Portland company that's stepping up and doing that. So good for you guys. Good well, thank you. you. We, yeah. we really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, John. Um, anything else you want to add or, or you got to get back to work? There, well, I do have to get back to work. <laughs> But there's more details on our website. There's lots okay. of information about our progress, how much we've donated. We have a little ticker at the top of the screen. So cool. it's, That's it's a good read. Great. Thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. You bet. And any of you out there watching, please um, check out their website. And from all of us here at Metro East, please be safe and be healthy. Bye.